Hi, welcome back. So last time we were talking about the ductor process and how you're building pressure. And I wanted to just do some heavier math and show that honestly for ideal gas, I can actually prove how the maximum entropy condition is as a sonic, you know, Mach three is equal to one condition. And so I wanted to go through some math to basically end up showing how we can prove that Mach three is equal to one if we assume ideal gas. And this, this will then apply to almost any inductor, and this is why inductors work, okay? So I, I wanted to pre-write a whole bunch of stuff. Let me walk you through it. Okay, so over here we had terms from that energy balance equation that were enthalpy plus the kinetic energy. Now, if this is an ideal gas, the enthalpy is really just the constant pressure civic heat, so Cp, times temperature. And then that velocity term I've split into the speed of sound, lowercase a, squared, and then Mach number squared, okay? And we know from ideal gas that the speed of sound is actually the square root of gamma RT, R being the gas constant, gamma being the ratio of specific heats. So constant pressure, specific heat, constant volume, specific heat. Okay, so if you then plug this in, you will then see that when you pull out CPT, you get a one plus gamma minus one over two Mach squared. And so that's the form that these energy terms are gonna take, which is then allows me to write on here that conservation of energy form solving for T3. Now remember X was just how I said that the mass of the rocket is some fraction X times the mass flow rate of the air being inducted. And so the conservation of energy term there, we have our rocket portion. So X one plus gamma minus one over two, the Mach of the rocket squared times temperature of the rocket. And then one plus gamma minus one over two Mach two squared times T2. And then all of that divided by one plus X. And then as well as there's this term. Now I highlighted this in green that's the only portion of this term that's a function of Mach 3, right? So, you know, what if we're then searching for Mach 3, what is Mach 3, right? That's the only portion of the term. So, and when we get into this entropy form, we will then see. Now, this is up top. This is the general form of entropy between two states, state one, state two. This is not related to the numbers I've written over here. So the change of entropy for an ideal gas uh, can be written in many forms. This is the form that involves temperature and pressure. And so it's constant it's a big heat, constant pressure of heat, Cp, times the natural log of T2 to T1, minus R times the natural log of P2 to P1. Okay, so, so that's our form, and then we're going to take this derivative with respect to Mach 3 when we fill it out. Now, this form with all of its natural logs, I'm, I'm going to take advantage of a whole bunch of things, but I'll go ahead and split things out, and only, I'm only going to try and kind of pre-keep the terms that are function of Mach 3, otherwise... I would need five more boards to do this, right? Because we're just going to take a derivative to Mach 3 and then set it equal to zero. Okay, um, conservation of mass gave us this equation. And so that's, you know, the, the mass flow rate state two, the mass of the rocket is equal to rho three V three A three. So when we solve for rho three, right? We have rho two V two A two. We have one plus X coming from the, the combined term mass rocket divided by, I've now turned the V three into the speed of sound three, A3 times Mach three, and then of course the area. But remember that the speed of sound is just gamma RT three times Mach three. So again, this term is then density. And as a reminder, pressure from ideal gas would relate really density and temperature. And so when we then come over here and we wanna write down our form of the change of entropy, and I'm just gonna start taking only the terms where I think Mach three might show up. So we have a Cp natural log of T3, and then this would be say over T2 compared to the air or over Tr compared to the rocket. And so remember your natural log when you're divided by it, you can actually subtract it. And so I'm gonna subtract that and send those away. And so I have Cp natural log of T3. We have a minus R natural log of P3, and then the, the, the P2 term or the PR rocket term. Again, I'm gonna, you know, use the, the properties of the natural log, turn those into subtractions, and then just say it's not a function of Mach 3, and so just plus, you know, dot, dot, dot. And I don't, I don't care about that right now. I'm only focused here. So splitting this up one more time, that's Cp natural log of T3 minus. Now I'm going to plug in the formula for pressure. This is actually, so we'll get, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and put that R outside. R, and so P3 is rho three, so I'll have a natural log of rho three plus the natural log of R, don't care, and then plus natural log of T three plus 
dot, 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 M many more terms that I'm not going to care about. Okay. Well, that R and T3 can already come over here. And so that's then a CP minus CP minus R, which I look at our relationships over there. That is simply CV. Great. Not done yet. So that's natural log of T3. And then minus R natural log of rho 3. Well, I'm now going to use this term. So minus R. And then what is rho 3? Again, using the property of the natural log, I've got a minus natural log of the square root of T3. Right? And I've got a minus natural log Mach 3. And again, many other terms. Now, property of natural log, this is an exponent raised to 1 half. So actually, this just becomes a minus 1 half natural log of T3. Great. So this is now CV and then a minus and a minus. So that's CV plus R over 2 times natural log of T3. And then minus minus, that's a plus R natural log of Mach 3. Okay, almost done. Um, T3, I'm now going to split up. I've been, I've been holding off. And so it's two things, CV plus R over 2. Let's come over here and realize that this is actually, if I pull out CV, that's then 1 plus R over 2 CV. Okay. And then I'm going to use that R over CV to be gamma minus 1 here in a second. Okay. Natural log of T3. But then again, the only things over here at T3 that's a function of Mach 3 is this bottom term. So again, properties of natural log. I'm going to pick up then a natural log of 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2 Mach 3 squared. Okay. And then plus R log Mach 3 plus, again, a whole bunch of other terms. Okay. Um, R over CV. Okay. Um, I don't want to do that one just yet. I haven't recovered it, but that's fine. So now I'm going to take the derivative of these terms with respect to Mach 3 and then see what happens. And so I'm going to put a line through this for a second. I didn't want to do that step just yet. So I'm going to actually treat this term here for just a second. Keep it there for one more round. CV plus R over 2. And then there is that minus sign. The derivative of this respect to Mach 3. And so properties of natural log is 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2 Mach 3 squared. And then the derivative of the inside and so then that's gamma minus 1. The 2 cancels out with the 2, Mach 3. And then this term plus r over Mach 3. And we're trying to see where that is equal to 0. OK. Um, so when I move this over to the other side, that'll get a negative. So that both negatives will cancel out. And so I'm actually going to move up here to finish out, because this is getting a little too low for me. And then we can divide by R. So that's why I didn't want to do that yet. So we actually have a CV over R plus a half. Okay. And that is times gamma minus 1 Mach 3 over 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2 Mach 3 squared. And that's equal to 1. And I picked up the squared from this term coming over. Okay. Oh, gosh, it's almost off of the camera. All right, I'll rewrite it here in a second anyways. We'll be good. So CV over R, I'm going over here, this is R over CV. So then it's actually then just 1 over gamma minus 1 plus a half, gamma minus 1 Mach 3 squared over 1 plus gamma minus 1 Mach 3 squared equal to 1. This gamma minus 1 comes in and cancels out that one. And so in the end, you then have... 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2, parentheses, Mach 3 squared over 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2, Mach 3 squared is equal to 1. So 
we're now done because the only way this formula is equal to 1 is in the condition when Mach 3 is equal to 1. That's the only time. So once, if those are both equal to 1, then the top, the, both the numerator and denominator are just 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2, which is then clearly 1. So a lot of math, and even say, yeah, I show I had a bunch of terms that I didn't catch, or I didn't care about because they weren't going to be function of Mach 3. And so we started off by looking at a ductor, saying it's an ideal gas, so then work the energy equation into the ideal gas form uh, using some of our ideal gas relations, relation to specific heat and the ratio of specific heat. We had our, our change of entropy from an ideal gas point of view from state to state. We then had, from last time, our equation for temperature, which is a conservation of energy. We had an equation for density from conservation of mass. And then we had our ideal gas relating pressure and temperature so that we can then write out the full it was, it was almost the full here, right? The change in entropy, we then were only capturing the ones that were either temperature three or Mach three. And so we, we kept it in terms of temperature first to kind of unite a bunch of terms and get it to this point. And then we then turned temperature three into, again, only taking the part of it that was a function of Mach. We then had a final equation here that was only a function of Mach. Uh, and then we were able to uh, take the derivative. So this equation was only a function of Mach. We were able to take the derivative spec to Mach 3 set it equal to zero and show that th this is only true. Um, and so it's a maximum um, maximum entropy because we set the derivative equal to zero. So maximum only occurs if Mach 3 equals one. Thanks.